So the subject of this episode is Hermann Goring Infantry or also potentially Luftwaffe Infantry because you can uh, potentially use the same colours and schemes. Um, now, these are probably the most controversial figures that I've painted. Here's some completed ones because of my choice of blue. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's unhistorical but you know what, most of my choices are to one degree or another unhistorical. But this blue probably sums up better than any other choice of colour my uh, sort of rationale when I am painting figures and how I make them stand out on the tabletop. Basically you can see these guys are blue when they're in a game and that's, that's the whole intention. And you'll see that at the end when I show you a completed company. So this is the, um, the style we're going to be painting today, a combination of camo and uh, blue. Uniform Luftwaffe blue, though it's not really Luftwaffe blue, it's my take on it. So it's quite a complex figure compared to other figures because, as you can probably see from here, the undercoats is black, Sanders, uh, German camel, dark brown. So that's, uh, excuse me, German camel, dark brown, and black, black. So it takes a bit more work. And others. I'm also going to be showing you a, a Panzer Faust um, here instead of just like a rifle or a machine gun, just so you can see the colours I use for Panzer Fausts, mortars, heavy machine gun tripod, things like that. So we're going to start with the camel tunic. And this is very, very similar to the other camels you'll see me painting. I'm going to be using the same uh, colours. So base coat is light mud from Panzer ACs. Uh, again from Panzer Aces, Splinter Blotches 2, which is basically the brown one, and then German uniform from model colour. So let's make a start. Okay. So the various bits of detail that I want to preserve but it's not essential that I do because I will be putting a lining off the German camel black brown back onto this after the camel's in place. It's not really practical to leave all shading whilst you're painting camel. There's lots of folds in the, the back of this tunic, for instance. One thing you notice about this tunic compared to like Panzergrenadiers or such like is the absence of um, a hood. But there's nothing to stop you. If you don't have these Hermann Goren sculpts, there's nothing to stop you from using other figures and just painting them with the, uh, the appropriate colours. You'll still get the same look. Because overall, remember, these guys are only 15 to 18 millimetres in height, so they're not very large. So I'm just going to keep going through, filling these areas in. As I said before, I don't have to worry too much about accuracy. But time well spent now is less time spent fixing little niggly mistakes later on. So I'll come back when that's finished. So there's the tunic base coat on. It took a couple of coats because it's quite a bright colour on a dark background. And uh, I've left just uh, enough shade to keep it, to give it shape. Basically, you don't want to leave too much shade. That's an important point to remember. Regardless of um, what kind of uniform you're painting, you don't want to leave too much shade. So. We're moving on to the brown now for the blotches. So for this, I'll 
I want to be painting something which is angular as opposed to as opposed to something which is like blotchy. When I'm coming to these pockets, I might paint a bit of brown on one side, but then make sure that the camel underneath it doesn't contact that same bit of the pocket because of different bits of material. They didn't pattern match them, if you see what I mean. So it helps to find the shape of the pocket. And I'm just going to carry on with these angular shapes. Gotta be careful that I'm leaving enough of the base colour so it's going to be the dominant colour. I have some camel starting at the top of the, the section at the some at the bottom. And then in these other smaller areas I have to make sure that my camel colours are not too big. And once again making sure I'm not leading the colour over like the arm onto the front of the tunic for instance, you know, they're, they're, they're separate pieces of material and just a wee blob on the collar there as you can see, you don't have to worry too much about that and then the arms, you'll notice I'm going around the arms you see I'm going over shade that I've left there And just another blob on the collar. So that's now ready for the green. So the green is going to be a bit of a filler between the, the browns. But once again, I've got to be careful to make sure The base coat is still the most dominant colour. You don't have to overthink the shapes, just keep them angular. On the arms it might be a bit more difficult, you might just find yourself painting little blobs and same for the collar for instance. Here I'm just going to go a wee blob at the scale that's all you really need it's just something confirming to your eye that there's um, some camel colours in place and I try to leave the ends of the arms without any camel colour just to help define the end of the sleeve right Next we're going to do some um, lining. So we're using German Camel Dark Brown, the base or shade colour for the tunic. Using my tiny, tiny, insane detail brush. I think it's got about maybe four hairs left on it. So I'm going to go around that pocket. And that one there and I'm just going to very carefully redefine it and then I know there's folds on the back of the tunic so you'll see I'm going to paint them in and also where I think I can't maybe see a fold but I like, like to put one in place just put another wee line there and then I want to do some redefining of the shapes, so there's a strap coming over there, I want to just strengthen the shade between the arm and the Panzerfaust, there's a strap here that I've gone over and a belt, and then on the back here I've gone over a strap there because of a tiny tiny bit of base colour to put in so I can cover that over and then in here I'm 
brush is a bit dry there folks when you're working with these really small brushes it's very easy for it to get dry so hopefully you get the angle for this it's very difficult for me but I'm um, basically painting the folds directly in there in the crook of the arm and then I shall do some around the collar between the arm and the shoulder and then there's one more thing to do that is this tunic's quite shapeless on the bottom it'd be nice if there was a hem so basically paint one in and I think it makes all the difference to the finished look the brush is nice and wet but not so wet that the paint will flow across the surface it will just flow off the brush and stay where you want it to stay and that hem just gives it a bit of a finish and helps define its shape so we're on to the controversial blue trousers next so my high contrast blues of choice is Vallejo Ultramarine I can't say that's the exact same colour as the Games Workshop one um, but the Vallejo one is what I'm using and then Azure for the highlight so starting with Ultramarine which is the, uh, the main colour I'm just going to be following the shape of the trousers as always getting the right angle for me and recording the painting is a bit tricky but this is where I've I used the black undercoat and that's required because brown would just look weird you could always use a um, a dark blue undercoat but that might also seem a bit strange where it meets up with the rest of the figure I've not really tried it I'm just quite happy with the black and it will need a second coat as it's going over the black surface you won't get it all on in one where I can get my um, base colours down on one I'm quite happy but it's not always the case you quite often have to come back and the brush is too wet there. Quite often I have to come back and give it another coat. Oh, there's a tricky one. I'm not sure if I'll get this on camera, but I've got to go under the body there for the legs. Now we've also got the cap, the forage cap. So we're just going to follow the shape around So 
So let's just quickly give it another coat. And you can see where I'm filling in where there's too much shade being left whilst I'm doing this so that there's enough black to give the shape but not so much that it totally dominates and then starts to look all stripy. The brush is splitting a little bit, it's had a hard life this brush. But there's still a bit of life in it yet, a bit like myself, I have to say. There we go, that's now ready for the highlight. I'm just going to go straight on to that. That's the Azure. Once again, insane detail brush. Just making sure it's nice and flowing and then I want to put the highlight on top of the shade I've actually put lines on a bit too thick there because as you can probably guess that's really quite a bold um, highlight colour Just down the front of the leg. It's quite a tricky one for me to see. Just freshen up the brush a bit. There we go. Now then inside the leg. So apologies if you can't see this folks, but I'm just putting tiny little lines here. They don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a lot there at all because most of it's out of sight. Right now the cap. Oh, that's a bit of a mistake there. I'm actually just going to go and fix that just now. Once again, it's, excuse me folks, once again it's dodgy angles. There we go, just come back to that. Right. Go around to the other side while that's drying. And we'll try that again, so. That's the kind of lines you want there. And then around the top of the hat. I'm not worried about the front of the hat because I have plans for that which you will see. Right, let's try that again. That's a bit better. Right folks, so there you go. He's now very controversially blue. So, um, it's lots of detailing now, so I'll take you through that bit by bit. So, gaiters and bread bag. I'm going to use Panzer Aces Old Wood and model colour Iraqi Sand. They're quite simple to paint, just don't get any on to the trousers. If you get any on the shoes it's not so much a problem because a quick touch up with black will take care of that. And excuse me folks, just got to get inside there. So I'll do the same on the other side and you notice that I've left a little bit of shade. Uh, Hopefully you can see that in there. That's where the, the gator will be tied. So, bread bag. There may or may not be some detail sculpting on the bread bag where you can leave a bit of shade in it, but don't worry too much about leaving a lot of internal shade within the shape of it. Like you see here, I'm just... Uh, 
painting a swatch of paint around there and then I can see a bit of detail there not worry too much about the underside and then that just needs another coat right and so I shall do that and finish the legator and then do the highlight so Iraqi sand and insane detail brush just catching those edges creating a stronger contrast as I can and that's all it takes for the gators but I've got a nice bit of shape and the bread bag is just as simple Just outline the shape of it. And there you go. Next we'll do the various browns on the uniform. Actually I mean browns on the webbing and the um, equipment. So German camel medium brown and then super highlight orange brown. So just load my brush so the sides of the water bottle then we've got various straps and I can see some ammo pouches underneath the arm belt and the ammo pouches carries on a little bit of a strap there there you, there you go but don't worry too much about what's happening well, excuse me in there guys it's this you're not going to see much of that it's right under the arms that's the most important bits covered so the highlight is this orange brown oh actually um, We'll start with because it's drying on the palette the water bottle I'm going to use some of the um, the old wood just put a little highlight on the edge just to catch the eye and then the gas canister strap I'm going to highlight that with the old wood too that strap goes around the front it's not visible on this figure if it was I would remember to paint it, just follow features all the way around. And then, got to be careful here folks, you don't want to use too much of this colour. But I use this on the leather parts. There's a leather strap, closes the water bottle. And then, got the leather pouches, the, the ammo pouches. And the belt. This colour is a bit tricky. If you put it on too wet, it becomes very semi-opaque. But anyway, there you go, that just helps those details pop out. So next we're going to do the grey parts. Right, so I'm going to be using grey on the boots and the metallics. So I'm going to be using German grey and London grey. Once again you can see they're quite strong contrast. So starting with the boots. This is going to be the only colour I'm going to apply to these black boots. It's a very soft highlight just to try and accentuate the shape. And then for the metallics we've got the, the cup on top of the water bottle. And 
and then we've got the gas canister so it's got the cap the main body and the bottom and then we're going to highlight the metallic parts with the London grey so we're back to insane detail and we need to be subtle here so just a little touch a little touch there and then on the gas canister right let's see if I can get my angle right to show you this some lines to define the top and the bottom Oops. and some lines just to show that sort of uh, ridged um, look and there you go so the Panzerfaust I'm actually going to use three colours I'm going to start with US Field Drab German Camel Beige World War II and then Deck Tan So I want this Field Drab as my main base colour So it's going to provide quite a bit of the shade and then I'll leave a little bit of the um, dark brown between the warhead and the tube. Once again leaving some dark brown between the aiming mechanism and the tube. One thing I've just noticed is a strap going over his shoulder so I'll have to do that. So I'll go back and fix that in a minute. One, it's the important thing to remember, you know, figures are three dimensional, the things can go all around. So that's, oh, that's a bit on this side too. Right, so that's my main shade colour now actually for them, for the Faust. So we'll go on to the German Camel Beige. This is where I'm going to try and give the uh, Panzerfaust a bit more shape. So the warhead is we've got the sort of the front cone, the back cone separated by that band. So that's what I'm trying to. Trying to show. And then just pick out the other details. Just refresh the brush a bit there. And we will soon be ready for the highlight colour. There we go. So see the deck tan, which is a really, really light colour once again. Okay, so this is oh, this is going to be tricky. Trying. Get this so you can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Sorry, folks, if I've missed anything. Tiny lines need the perfect 
and mix the paint and moisture on the brush. And when you're doing this yourself, you can pick a bit of angle to approach the figure than I'm doing. Right, some little spot highlights. Then just a little something along the back there of the tube. And there you go, that sufficed. And I'd also use that, as I said, for mortars and um, machine gun tripods. So my fairly standard skin colours that I use pretty much all the time. Jeremy Camel Pale Brown. Game colour Bronze Flesh Tone, anything similar will do and then flat flesh okay so this guy's trying to hide his details in amongst a hunched position so we've just got to move the figure around so we can get into all the nooks and crannies Painting side on faces can be a bit tricky. So we've got a nose. We've got a chin. Got a cheekbone there. And an eyebrow. And the other side can see an ear and sort of cheekbone and chin. That's all we have to do for that. And in the hands, for this we don't want to be thinking too much about internal shade as in shade between the fingers because they're really quite small. So I'll just block them in. With the camel pale brown. So that's the first colour. Then we're into the what's well, basically the main skin colour. That was like that was the pale brown is like a just like a shade, an extra shade to be honest. So once again we've got our nose. It's a bit more paint, eyebrow, ear, brush is very dry there, oops hold on a second, move the angle a bit just to try and get a top lip and a bottom lip. There we go. Now then, fingers, folks. Tricky, tricky every time, so... I prefer it best if I can draw the brush... Oh, excuse me, managed to flick that onto my finger. If I can draw the brush away... Proving a bit difficult. And here I know I've got uh, the back of the hand, the thumb, and then fingers. But these are all tucked in, you probably can't even see me doing it underneath, so it's not such a, an issue with them. And that's the main colour for the skin. Now we just need a bit of 
highlight just to help it pop so we're onto that flat flesh colour so for instance this is more again like spot highlights I'm just going to touch the ear touch the nose just touch on the eyebrow draw a line there between the cheek and the mouth And then with the fingers, I don't want to overdo this, I just really want to maybe try and catch the ends of the fingers. I quite often do what I call Homer Simpson fingers, which is just three fingers. You know, they're not always necessarily sculpted with all the fingers visible. If three is good enough for Homer Simpson, it's good enough for me. But those just little spots just help to make the skin details pop so there's just a couple of details one thing that I forgot to mention is the hair I would normally paint the hair the same time as I'm painting the browns using the German Camel medium brown and then the, the old wood as you can see there and then I painted a black T on the front of the cap and then I'm taking some off white, right? And paint. Oh, dear, dear. Try that again. Paint a white T into that, just so you've got that Luftwaffe emblem. But there you go folks, Luftwaffe, Field Division or Hem and Goring or whatever you might want to use. Nice and bright, distinctive, that will stand out on the tabletop, that's certainly my intention. So I shall show you what a complete company looks like and you can see how you might want, how you can possibly use any old figure to achieve a company that looks like this because these sculpts are out of production now. So here you can see a company that I have completed for myself. That's the company command you're seeing there. And you've got a couple of grenadier platoons, mortar platoons, and a heavy machine gun platoon. Now let's have a look at the uh, the mortar platoon. You'll see the uh, the camel beige, a uh, World War II camel beige colour a pattern on the mortar so it's nice and nice and bright but still in the sort of dark yellow area not exactly there but in the dark yellow area and it's also used on the tripods for the heavy machine guns now you can see these guys are the dedicated Hem and Goring Stroke Luftwaffe Field Division sculpts that you can't buy anymore. But you can still paint Grenadier figures and use them as a Hem and Goring or Luftwaffe force because they've all, got, they've all just got tunics, you know, and, and you can see the tunics there, you can, you can paint them blue. Blue trousers, blue tunics, blue forage caps, there you go, you're fine and it's going to get the look and I've done that myself before um, for other people with, for instance, anti-tank gun crews. But you can also use Panzer Grenadiers, anybody who's in a camel smock, they, it's not going to look exactly the, the, right, um, the right style of smock because it'll have a hood, but you're not going to notice that very much at the 15mm scale. So you can still give them blue trousers, camo, smock, you know, um, and get them looking like the Herman Goring. These guys here, I've based them for Sicily, sort of rocky, sandy um, base with a little bit of covering of um, a little shrub, shrubby bushes and, and such like. Uh, the, um, that was the first full deployment really in Sicily 
uh, the Hemming Conan guys, and that's where I've always remembered them from. So I thought I'm going to base them like that, and I'll be using these really in my mid-war battles. Uh, though they can be used in late war, I've got some Panzer Frex prepared for that, but otherwise there's no Panzer Fausts on any of the bases. But there you go guys, as you can see they're nice and bright and they're really quite different, stand out from the crowd so to speak. They're very blue, but remember you're looking at them close up just now, when you put them on the, the tabletop they'll be much further away, the blue will be toned right down, and if you were to use a more um, accurate colour of blue, the chances are on the tabletop they're really just going to look grey. So there you go, there's my take on uh, Hemingor, uh, Hemingoring Division, Luftwaffe Field Division, Luftwaffe Blue, at least my version of it. So um, I hope you find that useful, give you some ideas around what colours you can use and what the um, and how to get the best contrast and such like out of them guys. So thanks for watching again and uh, please check the playlist for other how to paint 50mm Flames of War figures.